Okay, grade 11, so we're gonna look at percentage yield today. Please don't get this mixed up with percentage purity, which is what we did yesterday. So percentage purity is about how pure was one of your reactants, okay? Percentage yield is about how efficient was the reaction. So for percentage yield, our formula, and again, this one is sometimes missing from your formula sheet, so make sure you know it. Oh, that quickly is dead. Okay, percentage yield, this one's also almost dead, is equal to the um, actual yield. And this is basically saying the mass of your product. Okay, that's what actual, well, that's what yield refers to. So the actual mass of your product. So in real life, how much product did we get when we actually did the reaction versus the theoretical yield. Okay, so the theoretical yield, we wish you no, my sweet boy. The theoretical yield, when we talk about the theoretical, this is what you would have calculated. Okay, calculated mass from stoichiometry. So those stoichiometric calculations we've been doing. Okay, the theoretical yield is basically on pen and paper, what should we get? Okay, versus in real life, what did we get? And because it's percentage, we obviously are going to times that by 100. Now, your actual yield will usually be given to you. I say usually, it's not always going to be given to you. They might give you um, the percentage yield. You must calculate this and then ask you what's the actual yield. Then you'll substitute into your equation and then you'll just have to manipulate it a bit. But they will usually give you this. This, they will usually give you a means of calculating and ask you to find percentage yield. Now, something worth noting is that your actual yield... Okay, your real life mass that you're going to see will always be less than or equal to your theoretical yield. Okay, you're never going to have a, a greater yield in real life than what it says on pen and paper. Okay, so your theoretical yield, what we've been calculating, this is a best case scenario. This is if the reaction happens completely, if we don't run out of any reactants, if none of our product or our reactant was somehow lost along the way. So for example, if we had to dry the product in order to uh, measure its mass, during that drying process, you're using different pieces of, apparatus, of, of apparatus, sorry, and in the process, tiny amounts of your product will actually stick to, for example, the filter paper or to the tongs that you're using or in the beaker, and you're going to lose little bits, little bits here and there. Okay. So your actual real life yield, if you've got a perfect, perfect setup, it will be equal to the theoretical yield, but that's very unlikely. It will usually be less than the theoretical yield. And also just in terms of checking your own numbers, it should usually, and I say again, usually, uh, you, how do you spell usually? Sorry. It should usually, that looks really wrong. Sorry, I don't know, I can't spell. It will usually be roughly um, between 50 to 99% is what we would expect, okay? If you're getting less than 50%, just double check your calculations. That might be the right answer, okay? But it's, it's, it's very unlikely because that's a very, very inefficient reaction that we've got. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do a few examples with you. Also, just quickly before I do examples, worth noting this actual yield, They'll sometimes be a little bit sneaky about it. Um, so that actual yield, they could say, okay, in real life, we had a... Um, hmm, okay, so let's say that the product is liquid or was in an aqueous solution and then they had to dry it or crystallize it out. Then we might have a crucible. They'll talk about a crucible and they'll talk about filter paper maybe. And then they'll talk about your actual product. And then they might give you the mass. Now here, again, it's just sort of a logical step. They might give you the mass of all of this. Because when we weigh it in the laboratory, we can't take the product off of the apparatus and put it on the scale by itself. So they could give you the mass of all of this in its entirety. And then usually they would also give you the masses of the apparatus as well. And then hopefully we can make the logical conclusion that to find the mass of the product, we would take the total mass and subtract the mass of each piece of apparatus. Okay, so that's also something worth noting, that for the actual yield, you might have to do a little mini calculation to find that. Okay, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to show you quite a basic one. I actually want you guys to try and challenge yourself a bit without me spoon-feeding you too much with this, because this is the last 
Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so um, I will also WhatsApp this to you, but remember, this was supposed to be the last thing on our schedules. We were going to do limiting reagents as well, but then I didn't, I wasn't keen on doing that because I would rather do it in class where I'm with you, where I can help you. But now with lockdown probably being extended, we'll wait and see what the president says, and then we might actually have to do that via YouTube as well. So this might be the last of the stoichiometry, but probably not. Okay, guys, so here's our question. We've got a, a reaction, carbon dioxide reacting with water to produce CH4, that's methane, and oxygen gas. And they tell us that we've got five kilograms of carbon dioxide reacting with excess H2O. So remember, that just means enough H2O. And it is found that six kilograms of oxygen gas is produced and we have to determine the percentage yield of O2. So for percentage yield, okay, we use the formula that percentage yield is equal to the actual yield over the theoretical yield. And then obviously times 100 for the percent. Now, they've given us that we've got 5 kgs of CO2. Okay, and they've told us that it is found that 6 kilograms of oxygen gas is produced. So you've got to actually be a little bit... Um, you've got to read carefully. I know it's something that we don't really enjoy, but you've got to read carefully to determine this 6 kilograms, what is it? So they say it is found that 6 kilograms of oxygen gas is produced is produced so in real life this six kilograms is our actual yield they've told us that the actual yield is six kilograms for oxygen okay so we know we're looking for the percentage yield we know the actual yield we know that that's a hundred and we still need to find the theoretical yield in order to use this equation okay so let's find the theoretical yield Theoretical yield, remember that is just basically, according to calculations, what mass of oxygen should we expect to be produced. So this is actually just a straightforward stoichiometry question. Okay? And always with stoichiometry, you start by balancing your equation, or at least checking if it is balanced. And it is definitely not. Okay? We've got three oxygens here and two over there. And we've got two hydrogens and four hydrogens. So immediately we can put a two there to sort the hydrogens out. Now that means I've got... Four oxygens on the left and two on the right so put a two over there and now we are balanced okay so let's go ahead and determine the mass of oxygen that should be produced from five kilograms of carbon dioxide so we're going number of moles of co2 equals mass of co2 over molar mass of co2 we want that we know the mass of CO2 is 5 kilograms, remember to convert, and the molar mass of CO2 is going to be 12 plus 2 times 16. And that gives us the number of moles of carbon dioxide, 5,000 divided by, okay, so we get 113,6363, I'm just going to call it 6364 moles. And so now we know the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Now we use mole ratios or balancing number ratios to determine the moles of oxygen. So that is um, CO2. So what we know to what we want. CO2 to O2 is 113,6363 plus 2 times 16. Number of moles of O2. And now we get from our balanced equation. That's a 1 is to 2 ratio. Okay, so if we want the number of moles of O2, we take the number of moles of CO2, we divide by 1, we times by 2, and that will give us the number of moles of O2. So we can say the moles of O2 equals the moles of CO2 divided by 1 times 2, and we sub it. 113,6364 over 1 times 2, and we get... Um, two two seven comma two seven two eight moles, and we don't want the number of moles of O two. We want the mass of O two. So we're going to be doing this formula again now. 
So we can say the number of moles of O2 is the mass of O2 over its molar mass, which is, we know that is 227, 2728. We want the mass of O2, the molar mass of O2 is 32. And we get the mass of oxygen produced is 7,272,73 grams. Now we can take this and put it into this formula. Okay, so it's basically a stoichiometric calculation with an extra step. So we can now take this and say, well, the percentage yield of our oxygen is equal to the actual yield which is six kilograms, so that's 6,000 grams, over the theoretical yield, which is 7272,73 times 100. Okay, so we're going 6,000 divided by 7272,73, and we get 82,50%. Okay, so our reaction is 82,5% 82, 82 efficient. We're getting 82,5% of what we ought to be getting, which is not bad if you consider large-scale manufacturing um, plants. That's actually a really good yield. Okay, so I'm going to leave you off there. I will forward you the worksheet for today, and then we'll have a little chat about what we should do next. <laughs>